Today's video is going to be a bit different and a bit maybe controversial. Um, I'm going to be discussing Bobby Fischer, which I'm actually doing a fair bit of research on like chess as a whole, but focusing in on the Fischer Spassky match in 1972, where of course Fischer beats Spassky in a historic game and then kind of disappears forever. And then the USSR go back to dominating the chess world championship because since 1948, post World War II, um, every single chess world champion was Soviet, right? And Fischer provided a break from that in 1972 because he was, of course, American. And then after Fischer um, didn't want to defend his title against Karpov, it went back to being uh, Russian dominated. And it's quite interesting because generally this is like Fischer's battle against Spassky is considered to be some kind of West versus East capitalist versus communist microcosm. Because at the time in 1972, during the Cold War, there was this idea of detente. And one of my history um, professors was actually talking to me about this. And basically, from like the 60s uh, into the mid to late 70s, there was essentially an attempt to try and ease the tensions between America and the USSR to try and avoid open conflict. Uh, like mir militarily, but this meant that like the Cold War wasn't going anywhere. There was still like proxy wars in places like Vietnam, and there was also like a cultural Cold War. This is like a very well researched area, but not so much in chess. The cultural Cold War is obviously still an idea of capitalism versus communism, individualism versus collectivism, right? Collectivism obviously being communist and individualism obviously being capitalist, right? Sense of liberty versus a sense of collectivism, I suppose. It's, it's a very interesting field, right? But this is normally seen through the lens of like sporting activities like table tennis, I think was a big one, or like athletics. I think, I don't know whether hockey was one. I don't know enough about all of the different sports, to be honest. But then there were obviously things like the space race, right? That's a way in which the Cold War was fought because the Americans were trying to beat the Soviets, of course, to reach the moon first. So that, of course, when the Americans win that race, that's a big boost for them in terms of their like supposed intellectual and technological superiority in the Cold War, trying to prove that capitalism is better than communism, right? Because they don't want to openly fight because nukes exist. Why does this relate to chess? <laughs> I've gone on a bit of a tangent. I do study history. Why does this relate to chess? Well, the Soviets saw chess not not just as chess, right? Not just as like a sport to be played by Soviets, like citizens and to be enjoyed. It was a state-sponsored program. The Soviet school of chess was funded by the state to try and create the strongest chess players in the world dominate the chess world championship which they did and therefore try and prove some kind of intellectual superiority of communism right by the way i've just got some games playing in the background that i played like an hour before this recording just as a bit of a visual to keep you occupied um i'm just going to turn this light on the lighting is kind of weird okay that's better so the soviets saw chess as a way for the soviet state essentially to invest in their citizens try and get the best chess talent possible and then display it on the international stage and be like look communism is really good because look at the kind of players that we can create and it worked it absolutely worked they dominated the the chess world champion um like title and like Soviet chess players like Petrosian, like Tal, like Spassky, like Karpov, they were like household names in Russia. Like, this is not like the US, where Fischer was only really starting to get known, like, during maybe the 1971 candidate cycle, but mostly during the actual World Championship match in 1972. The Soviets cared a lot more about chess than the West did, right? But America 
they didn't invest into their players as much, right? It was just kind of a hobby that was more of a private affair where actual like chess clubs which were like privately owned would try and nurture chess talent again this is kind of just how a capitalist society would work as opposed to a communist society right there's less state intervention in affairs like that or that's what capitalism should be anyway it is interesting though because you have to put it in the context of detente where the americans don't want to rile the soviets up too much basically and once they start to realize, I've been looking at some old newspaper articles um, from America, like from the early 70s, like before and during the World Chess Championship game between Fischer and Spassky. I have a lot more to look into. So if you guys enjoy this type of content, I would love to make more of it. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any specific questions or things that you think would be interesting to look into. But the Americans have to be careful. That they're not overplaying this a bit too much because in terms of Fisher beating Spassky, right? Because they don't want to like provoke the Soviets. Okay. Because it's, it's a tense time. Vietnam exists, right? And I'm actually not, wait, let me check something. Yeah. So the Vietnam war ends in 1975. So it's still going on during the World Chess Championship match, which obviously is a proxy war for the Soviets and the Americans. So you've got to be careful. And the problem is that Fischer did not care about this, obviously. And he said a lot of anti anti-Soviet things. Like Fischer believed the Russians had fixed world chess. He's like quoted saying these kinds of things. Um where they would like draw against each other to in, in tournaments like strategically so the non-Soviet players couldn't make it into like the finals of a World Chess Championship. They did kind mm, it, it, It's hard to say, because I think Spassky, there are records of him saying that they didn't do this. Um, I need to check that, to be honest, because it's in a book that I've left at home. A uh, very interesting book. But Spassky also didn't really support the communist regime. He didn't like the uh, Soviet government. So it's difficult to tell whether he'd be telling the whole truth or not. But Fisher believed, and many Americans believed, that the Soviets in candidates tournaments, right, that they would draw against each other to save energy, basically, so that they could beat Fisher, to keep Fisher out of the World Chess Championship, essentially. And... If you look at some of the candidates' tournaments, uh, like pre-1971, that's not an unfair criticism. It's it's not a crazy criticism for Fisher to be making. So as a result of this, the, the candidate cycle was changed so that it was like a series of 1v1 matches, essentially, so it couldn't be fixed, which, not going to lie, was really really interesting because some of those candidates games were crazy and Fisher like destroyed everyone in 1971 like it wasn't even close uh, I think he played I think Max I, I pronounce this wrong every time I'm going to say you I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, is it Irva Max Irva I think he like 6-0'd him or 5-1 against him and then Petrosian he destroyed as well I want to say point is point is Fischer hated the Soviets and he saw himself as like a one-man army to take down the Soviet chess machine he says he says like things like the Russians have cheated me for years they're not going to do it anymore um Soviet Russia is using chess as a propaganda weapon against the capitalist West they like to promote the idea that only the collective system and not the individual can produce the greatest chess players again these are quotes from Fischer they're not unfounded he says it's nice to smash the Russians. That was the whole idea, to smash the Russians, which he said like directly after his win against Spassky. And it's kind of crazy because you would expect the Amer like the US media to be like, yeah, we agree with you, mate. We don't like him either. So we're going to like see you as some kind of knight, like knight in shining armor for that represents capitalism against communism. But they didn't. They didn't. It's interesting, though, because privately, they did. 
There's evidence of telegrams sent to Fisher congratulating him for his victory from like President Nixon. And you also have Henry Kissinger, the U.S. Secretary of State in 1972, sending messages to Fisher, basically begging him to play, play against Baski after Fisher forfeited game one of the World Chess Championship match because he didn't like all the cameras and the audience, etc. He, Fisher was kind of weird, right? I'm not saying that he wasn't. I'm not saying that he was a completely logical person. But it, it was a bit ridiculous. Um, like, I don't know whether we'd have that anymore. Uh, like, just the type of, I don't know, performance aspect of it. But Fisher didn't like the cameras, etc. He was a bit mental. But basically... What I'm trying to say is the the U.S. like government system supported Fisher, but they didn't want that to be public necessarily, right? Because this was all done kind of privately. And then when I've like I say, I've been looking at newspaper articles from like during the match, after the match, they say that Fisher, they like basically what these newspaper articles do. Um, they basically all do the same thing. They say that Fisher was incredibly good at chess, right? And during the during the match, they're like, yeah, he's going to win, no doubt. But then they talk about Fisher, <clears throat> and they go off at him, as in, like, they hate his conduct. They think he's a loner. They think that he's incredibly arrogant. That's not only US media. I found um, newspaper articles from the UK that do the same thing, if not more overtly, just basically hating him and being like, you know, he's not a representative of capitalism, which, or, or of like the West as a whole. But you'd expect them to want to say that he was, because that would, you know, say that that would um, try and prove that capitalism is better than communism, because look, our intellectual prowess is actually better than yours because we smashed you in the World Chess Championship. Again, it's a bit it's a bit nuanced, and I may be missing some crucial information here. So if I am and you guys know, then please drop it down in the comments. I'm not going to be offended whatsoever if you can provide useful information. I would in fact be very grateful because I'm doing research on this right now. Um <clears throat> But it's also interesting to look at what happens after the match because Fisher kind of like retreats into obscurity and because because he doesn't want to defend his title against Karpov, I think in 74 or 76. I can't remember how, um, how the cycle worked back then. Again, I do need to do a bit more research, but I thought this video would be interesting regardless. Because uh, basically Fisher didn't like the tournament rules. Um, I think he thought that it was way too long, basically. Because it went on for months, which kind of ridiculous. And when I was looking at this, I was like, hang on. Surely the US could have like exercised more power over FIDE to try and get the rules changed. Because it's not like the Cold War was over. You know, the USSR collapsed in 1991. And yeah, they started to get more friendly towards the end, but it certainly wasn't over. And Karpov and Kasparov went on to dominate world chess for like a couple decades, which again, you would argue, you could argue is like a show of um, Soviet intellectual prowess over the Americans because Fisher didn't want to play under those rules. Surely the US could have tried to get FIDE to be more lenient with the rules and lean more towards Fisher. In fairness, I do think Fide agreed to the majority of things that Fisher wanted. But there was like, I think there was like one thing that they didn't agree on. And Fisher was like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not playing. I think it was something like really petty, which is really unfortunate because how cool would it, would it have been to see Fisher like dominate chess for decades? I, I, I think he could have done it. People argue that Karpov and Kasparov brought in a type of chess that Fischer couldn't, wouldn't be able to deal with, and that Karpov would have definitely beaten Fischer. But I don't know. I don't know. I've got faith in Fischer. Um, I think he probably 
I think in 74 or 76, whichever one he was supposed to play Karpov in, I think he could have won. After that, maybe not, but it's interesting. And what I'm trying to say is that the US could have, I feel like, supported Fisher more, but chose not to, right? So they're like essentially not supporting their boy when in the context of the Cold War, you would expect them to because that's a mic like Fisher retaining the world championship title would be a microcosm of like American uh, cultural superiority and intellectual superiority, right? Um, and then in 1992, Fischer comes out of nowhere and he plays a match against Spassky as like a rematch in Yugoslavia, which was under like some political restrictions by the US at the time. I won't go into why, but there was like a whole, um, uh, like a problem with Yugoslavia trying to break off from other parts of Yugoslavia. There was like a separate Yugoslavia or something. I'm honestly not that clued in on that period of history. I probably should be. Um, and I, I can be if you guys want me to um, talk about that in future videos. Um, but the US basically just issued a warrant for Fisher's arrest. Like, which is crazy. Like, that's a former chess world champion. The only uh, US world champion bar Alakine kind of was it Alakine? I think one of them in the um, mid 40s kind of was American, but not really. Um, and yeah, so Fisher retreats into hiding yet again. And the Americans keep out a warrant for his arrest, which I just think is mental. Like, I guess the Cold War is over at that point in 1992, because of course the Soviet Union collapses in 1991. But still, it's not like Russia disappears entirely, and you still have Kasparov you know, dominant. So it's interesting. I feel like it kind of, like this um, difference in how the 1972 World Chess Championship is often portrayed as like the US versus the Soviets and capitalism versus communism and individualism versus collectivism. I don't think it's that straightforward because if that was the case, Fisher would be heavily supported by the US government. Spassky was heavily supported by the USSR. He didn't even like the USSR. He didn't like communism. When he lost the match and returned home, they like destroyed his life, basically. He was not a fan of their system anyway, and he constantly broke rules when he was younger and spoke out against communism when he was like growing into the player that he became and when he took the world championship title. Spassky, he didn't like communism. The American media didn't like Fisher. And the Western world in general was like, look, this guy is just kind of a brat. He's good at chess, but he's a horrible person. So how can you say that Fisher represents Western capitalism and Spassky represents Eastern communism when there's, there's a, um, a divide between these players and their governments and their media? I think it's a bit more nuanced and I would like to look into it. Well, I will look into it because I'm doing it um, anyway. But if you guys want to see videos on it and some of the things that I'm finding, which I'm finding some very interesting stuff about Fisher just in general, I think that Fisher may be the reason that chess players are viewed as absolute weirdos nowadays. Um, so I would love to make a video on that. Sorry, my mic cut out for a second there. Um, I don't know why. But I'd love to make a video on that if you guys would want to see it. So please let me know what you think down in the comments section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this different style of video. And I think the games over in um, the background were pretty interesting. I just ended up playing pretty decent chess this morning. Um, but yeah, check out the video that appears on your screen here. Because YouTube thinks you're going to like it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.